Defence and Security Analyst Professor Michael Clark. It is a rare speech, isn't it? Um, what do you make of it? Yes, um, I mean, the chiefs uh, don't say very much. The last two before uh, Richard Moore used to do these speeches very occasionally. The one before that didn't do any. Um, but he's now doing one or two talks publicly. And this is important because it's in Czech, uh, the Czech Republic, which is on the front line with Ukraine. Also, it remembers 1968 and the bravery of some of the Czechs at that time. Interesting, he's saying to the Russians, you know, if you, <clears throat> if you think you, you can help, just, just uh, you know, reach out to us. It's what's known as the traders are walk-in. Um, about half of the people that uh, the intelligence services deal with, roughly, mm. are what they call walk-ins. People who come to a British embassy or a British delegation somewhere and say, I think I've got something I'd like to talk to you about. So it's not unusual, then? Oh, no, not really. Okay. Not really. I mean, they're, they're treated with enormous scepticism because, of course, walk-ins could be uh, fantasists or they could be double agents or whatever. So they have to prove that they've got something that, that is useful. But about half of, of, of what goes on in the security services is initiated by somebody else. They, they, they approach us as it were, or the approach to the security services. And he's really saying to a lot of dissident Russians, you know, we're open, we're open for business. You've got to talk to us, talk to us. Wow. And the other thing he was really getting at was the nature of modern intelligence, which is much more about what's called OSINT, open source intelligence. And most of the chiefs will say, will tell you that, that at least 90%, some say 95% of all the intelligence material is OSINT. It's out there already. So the technique is to get artificial intelligence, to be able to use it, to get through it all, only about 10%, maybe less than that, is human intelligence. But when you need human intelligence, when you need somebody on the ground who's prepared to take a risk or break the law or whatever it might be, then nothing else will do. Mm. They say it's, it's a bit like a dinner jacket. You know, you don't use it often, but when you need it, nothing else will do. <laughs> it's key. Um, he also spoke about, didn't he, Michael, um, the situation mm. in Ukraine. So that's a good point for us to talk about what's happening. What do we know? Yeah, a <clears throat> uh, couple of things. Um, overnight, the, the Russians launched a number of missile attacks um, uh, in, uh, towards Odessa uh, and in the western region. And uh, some explosions took place at uh, uh, Kiriskaya uh, in Crimea, which were probably uh, uh, Ukrainian attacks. We don't have that for definite yet, but there's certainly big explosions. It looks as if it's ammunition or something else. Uh, those, are the, those are the things that were filmed uh, early this morning, and there's a whole series of those sorts of images. So something went on mm -hmm. at uh, Kiriskaya. Uh, and then the, the Russian missile attacks did cause a lot of damage. <clears throat> it looks as if the Ukrainians only intercepted about 50% of them. These are missiles and drones. Now, normally, they, they look to intercept about sometimes 90% of these incom incoming attacks, but they didn't manage to do it, and that was the result uh, in Odessa this morning. Now, maybe they just, just had a bad night in terms of air defence. Maybe there are, more, there are more structural problems. Maybe they're short on ammunition or there's something not working as well as they would have hoped with their interception uh, electronics. We don't know, but they certainly didn't have a very good night of it, and Odessa has felt the result uh, because of it. <clears throat> and then on the rest of the front, uh, there's quite a lot going on. I mean, the map doesn't change all that much, but for those of us who are taking an interest in it, there's quite a lot, quite a lot of things are changing. And so the, um, the Ukrainians are attacking in three places, north and south of Bakhmut, South of Orykiv, that's their biggest uh, offensive at the moment, and they've, they've pushed quite a deep salient into that. And then in Kherson, they've crossed the river, the Dnieper River, and they're pushing to the east of that. So the Ukrainians have opened up those three areas, and they, at some point, we would expect to try to push through those areas. But the Russians are putting a big force together around Kupiansk, and they may be trying a counterpunch of their own, and we'll see how that develops in the next week. Michael. Please join the conversation. Put your comments and suggestions below in the comment section. Thank you for subscribing to this news channel. You will be notified of any breaking news and new post as you become part and parcel of the TAO Media family. Please like and share TAO Media. We love you all. Please support TAO Media Foundation by joining membership and visiting Amazon UK to purchase the displayed books to aid our orphanage projects across Africa.